Hi, I'm the Gadget Guru Andy Parr, and you're watching the Vault.net. Okay, you're probably already sick and tired of all the hype generated on the new iPhone. But for those of you who followed my reporting on new technologies over the past two decades know that I usually provide a slightly different take than the usual fanboy press. So with that introduction, here's the Gadget Guru's take on the new iPhone 2.0. The rumors have been flying, but now the facts are clear. The iPhone 2.0 is coming on July 11th, and it will deliver more features than the current model for a greatly reduced price. The 8GB model will sell for $199, and a 16GB model will go for $299. The 8GB model will be available in black only, and the 16GB will be available in black or white. In his keynote address, Steve Jobs stated that Apple sold 6 million iPhones in the past year. And the number one reason many folks have not purchased an iPhone yet was due to the price. Well, that barrier has now been removed. And if you think about it, if you drive a big SUV, an iPhone now costs less than two tanks of gas. Just the price drop alone is newsworthy as some crazy stood in line for days for the privilege of paying $599 for the 8GB model just one short year ago. Hey, I was an early adopter and I like my iPhone. Yes, I had some problems at one point, but that was due to one of the store geniuses making a poor decision. It took a few hours on the phone with Apple Tech Support to prove that he made an error in judgment and that I truly had a defective model. That same original 8GB model now sells for $399. The iPhone 2.0 will sell for $199 for an 8GB model. My first thought is that Steve Jobs is in the wrong industry. Instead of selling computers and phones, he should be running the oil industry and start bringing the price of gasoline back down to a reasonable level. But enough on that subject, now let's get back to the new iPhone. The big news is that the iPhone 2.0 will incorporate 3G technology that promises to enhance the internet surfing experience by serving up pages twice as fast as the original iPhone. However, that technology was available last year, but just not on the iPhone. Other phones had it. My old Samsung Blackjack had 3G, but Apple had stated that if they had incorporated it into the original iPhone, battery life would have suffered. Since the iPhone battery is not user replaceable, meaning that you can't carry a spare battery with you, battery life is an important factor. The 2.0 version is touted to allow for up to five to six hours of browsing, seven hours of video playback, and 24 hours of music playback. And there's another point I almost forgot. The iPhone is first and foremost a phone. Hence the name iPhone. And it will deliver up to five hours of talk time when on a 3G network. Understanding that not all the country has 3G available and that when you're in a 2G area, such as AT&T's Ed service, the talk time increases to eight to 10 hours. Yes, it still has Wi-Fi, which although Apple is stating that 3G is nearly as fast, I'm having a hard time swallowing that one, but we'll wait and see if that's true. The iPhone 2.0 comes with a new operating system, and if I understand Steve Jobs correctly, it will be a free upgrade to existing iPhone owners, but it will cost $9.99 for iPod Touch owners. The iPod Touch is just like an iPhone, but without the phone. This is the second time iPod Touch owners have gotten the shaft. This brings up yet another sidebar for me. Why does just about every manufacturer on the planet have to make their prices end in 99? Now, whether it's cents or dollars, 99 has always been a big deal. Well, that penny between $9.99 and $10 make me jump up to buy it? To me, it's just a waste of ink on the price tag. When you stop and think about buying, let's say, a car or motorcycle, does that extra dollar make you rush in and buy it when it's priced $19,999 versus a plain old $20,000? Well, 
Well, I'm sure that some big marketing agency is telling all the manufacturers that 99 at the end of the price makes people buy your product over the competition. Okay, enough ranting. Now back to the news. Another noteworthy feature is the built-in GPS. Yes, GPS. It will include a new enhanced GPS mapping system as well as support for enterprise services. You know, those corporate email systems that currently are married to Blackberries and a host of new downloadable applications that until now were not available. And guess how much those application downloads are predicted to cost? Wait for it, $9.99. Now, here's what I'm not hearing in this announcement. There's no copy and paste feature for the new iPhone, and there's no support for Flash. Now, that's an important one, as so many websites use this technology. Apple also announced they are abandoning its Doc Mac service and replacing it with MobileMe. Not Mini-Me from Austin Powers, but MobileMe. Current Doc Mac users will be automatically upgraded to MobileMe. It also has a cool web address, me.com. It's a service that pushes information back and forth to your phone and constantly keeps your computer's calendar, contacts, and email in sync with the iPhone. It was promoted to work with an iPhone and a Mac or Windows computer. And guess what? The mobile me is priced at, here we go again, $99 per year for 20 gigabytes of storage. What? 99 and not 100? As current iPhone owners will tell you, the original model has this very strange recessed headphone jack which does not allow for the connection of standard headphones unless you purchase a funky looking and overpriced adapter. The iPhone 2.0 is wiser and now has a standard flush mounted headphone jack. Well, whoopee! At least they realized their previous mistake and corrected it. The rest of the iPhone is pretty much the same. The same buttons, the same three and a half inch display, and the camera was not upgraded. It still can't take movies, only still images. Hmm, do I hear the words upgraded model coming soon? So here's the question that I'm facing. Will I buy this model? Well, the answer is simple, maybe. But not now and not on July 11th and probably not in the first month. I'm going to wait for the early adopters to work out the bugs and post them on their blogs and then I'll make that decision. I mean, after all, I have an iPhone now, so I'm in no rush, nor will I lose a night's sleep for having last year's model. Yes, the 3G technology is a grabber for me, but not so much where I want to be another guinea pig for Apple. I'll simply wait a bit and then decide if the 3G and GPS are worth the extra bucks in the extension on my AT&T contract. Hey, I was an early adopter with my Victory Vision motorcycle, and as others can tell you, I've already been through a recall, some flash upgrades, and some other inconveniences. So maybe I'm getting older, but I don't have to be the first on my block for the iPhone 2.0. Even I have to admit that the $199 price point is a great one. Heck, I'd even pay the extra buck to make it $200. Surfing the net on the iPhone is a much more pleasant experience than what I found on the current batch of Windows Mobile or BlackBerry devices. The emission of flash though is a bad thing, but I'm sure it could and most likely will be a future upgrade and maybe, just maybe if it had that feature, combined with the rest of the upgrades, maybe I'd buy the new one and give my old one away. So how about you? Does the price grab you? Will you be dumping your old phone for the new $199 iPhone? Well, post your comments on my website at thevog.net and we'll see what you think. For thevog.net, I'm the Gadget Guru Andy Parr. I'll see you on the road and online.